We deliberately set out to have May as the financial month, personal finances covered in this month of May. And so I scored the continent. Okay, I'm kidding. I looked around for people who are practitioners in personal finances and such a person is the coach, Amos Ngao, a financial coach. And the co-founder and CEO of Money Clinic Limited, a firm that offers integrated training solutions to corporates, that is financial literacy and mentorship. He is also the founder of a program called Money Gossip, which is designed to help young professionals and entrepreneurs get them to make the best out of their money in their active years. It is his passion for seeing others achieve financial freedom that has fueled this desire to coach on money matters which began about 16 years ago. Out of this experience, he has authored a book called Turnaround Solutions and it offers practical financial solutions to people. He has worked with individuals, with families, with corporations, with social groups, with churches, with schools and he's known for his practical money solutions that cut across all levels of income. This conversation was insightful. You want to listen to it. Stay tuned. Welcome to the Life Signatures Podcast with Lawrence Namale. Lawrence is a life coach, author, and keynote speaker who loves to tackle different topics on purpose, productivity, and resilience. His mission in life is to awaken all your boundless possibilities available in you. Life Signatures Podcast is dedicated to bring to reality every single person who knows that deep down in their gut, there's got to be more to life than this. And now, here is your host, Lawrence Namale. Hello, good morning. Good evening, sir. <laughs> yeah, you're awake. Hmm? Which which part of the world are you? I just I was just checking to see if you're alert or not. Well, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, and welcome to Live Signatures. Yet another episode here on Wednesday's Conversations, and today I have a privilege to talk to Mr. Moneybags. Anyway, I have a privilege to talk to a friend of mine all the way from across the border and we're doing this phone conversation. You know, Life Signatures is about learning about purpose, productivity and resilience and uh, of late I've been talking in my episodes about money. Now that I'm not a money guru, I thought of talking to someone who will lend us some kind of wisdom in terms of that department. Amos, how are you doing? Fine, sir. How are you? I'm all right. How is Nairobi? Uh, tell me if I got it right when I say Burundi. Nyo, 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 nyo. Yeah, you got it right. You got it right. Actually, you know it better than <laughs> I do. <laughs> At some point in time, you're in Kampala, right? Yes, yes. And we did meet. Yeah, you were on uh, a book tour. What, what was it about? No, no I, was, uh, I was doing some training for a client in Kampala. Yeah. But at the same time, when I do those uh, campaigns, I also do my book book campaign. So I push my book as well. Okay. Uh, was it a money kind of a training you're doing? Yeah. Yes. I preach, breathe, uh, uh, and leave money. Any money discussion, I'm there. You'll always find me there. Yeah. How important is money, my friend? How important is money? You know, I know you're a Christian. And there is this school of thought yeah. of Christians that say money is not uh, important. You know, salvation is, Jesus is important. Tell us. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, um, 
is biblically it is actually God who uh, gives us ability to make money. Yeah. And as a coach I'll tell you money in itself is neither good nor is it bad but what you do is what reveals is your character. So we say the aspect of money is that aspect of money of it not being good or bad is what we call a moral. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it is important because uh, it, it is it is something that we all need um, to survive we all need to save someone we all need to buy something. So it is um it is actually as a Christian you've just been called to be good stewards of it. Yeah. And most importantly what you do to to help other people. Awesome. So money is not evil in and of itself. It's neutral. You could say that. Yes. And it's the love of it that makes it evil if you love it too much. Yeah. I normally use this example. I found myself I just caught myself using that example when I was doing a series mm-hmm. on uh, my podcast about money, a uh, purpose and money. And I found myself using the the mask. I don't know if you've ever watched the movie called The Mask. Uh-huh. By uh, Jim Carrey the, the main actor in there. When Jim Carrey puts on a yeah, mask he it brings out his vibrancy his fun part his loving part you know but then when the villain puts on the mask it brings out his vileness mm-hmm. so that's money isn't it yeah it brings out that's who you really are yeah so tell me making money does it also go back to the roots of who you are or you can make money and then you change who you are That is a very interesting question. Yeah. In fact, I put it this um I put it amongst my my biggest fears. I yeah. know people fear snakes, people fear um, heights. Yeah. For me, I fear getting a lot of money that I was not prepared for. I see. Because uh if I'm not prepared for it, and money has capacity to change you, transform you into something you never thought you could be. Right. They normally say <coughs> they normally say if you want to test the true uh royalty of a of, of a man. Yeah. You know? Meet him when he has a lot of money. Right. And if you want to test that one of a woman, yeah. Meet her when a man doesn't have money. Yeah. So you see how much he has been able to define us. So uh people people need to be because at some point you will make money that you did not expect you will yeah. like get money you will be in a good season yeah. and probably one of the things that I'd like us to discuss today is for uh, money personalities and money seasons right let's just because, get right into it yeah, yeah. because uh, like you asked uh, there are people who feel money is evil eh? yeah so you'll find sometimes we have that aspect of money personalities called them money monk money monk m o monk m o k m o n k yes mm-hmm. so you will find that uh, such people believe that money is evil mm-hmm. based on it just set up or something that they've grown up seeing yeah culture okay mm-hmm. culture Yeah. and then you'll find uh, it's a rare personality but it's there then you'll always find there's also another personality called money avoiders money avoidance avoiders yes people who avoid money okay and for some reason all of us have been there for a season you see when you're living from hand to mouth yeah any discussion any discussion to do with money you will put it aside you don't want to hear anything yeah and especially when you're broke i don't know how <laughs> uh, ugandan men behave but our kenyan men when they are broke they are even so irritable <laughs> <laughs> i think it's a universal you know, thing it's a universal thing it's a universal thing yeah yeah because the very nature of money makes makes us men uh, uh make us be defined by what we can afford or what we can pay for so those are two personalities that are rare mm-hmm. but then the main Two personalities are totally opposite. Money holders, they hold money. Yeah. People who will always, you know, carry lunch to work. Yeah. You know, people <laughs> who you're contributing something, they're the first one to say, "Hey, we are being overcharged." People who are very stingy with their money. Yeah. You know, and we know them. A lot of accountants fall in that category. <laughs> and these are people who, they, it's hard for them to lose money. 
but also investment opportunities normally bypass them very fast. Yeah. Because by the time they, they think about it, they go up, they, they, they will take forever. Yeah. So you'll see them trying to save up for uh, a house, which may take them another 10, 20 years. Okay. But then comes my favorite, which I fall under, believe you me, these yeah. are spenders. Money spenders. Money spenders. People who spend money and they feel like everything good is meant for them. Yeah. You see a nice suit, you're like, that's mine. I, I deserve it. Yeah. And a lot of us are, are defined. We allow that to define us. So mm -hmm. we find ourselves, when we don't have money, that's when now we also become irritable. We become now money avoider. We don't want anything to do with that. So once you understand your money personality, mm. you are able to understand in a season of scarcity, when I don't have money, how do I behave? Mm. You know? Mm. So when you don't have much season, normally it's the guys who are spenders a lot. When you don't have money? They, the, yes, the when they don't have money in that season. The spenders get, yeah. get, 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 uh, get affected. Get affected the most. And that's why you'll find, that's why a lot of men are, uh, are fall under. Mm. A lot of men, because they are very nature to provide. Mm. Our very nature to provide, we allow it to define us. So we're always going there to fight for something. It's not all men, but majority of men are spenders. Okay. Now, I, I want to ask yeah, you so an interesting question you, before you can go further. Uh, I want to ask you an inter interesting question because before you can go further. There's this thing that people normally say about uh, rich folk. They normally say that they are stingy. Mm -hmm. Is it true? No, they are not stingy. They are not the 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 holders. No, no, no. Rich people are not holders. Yeah. One thing I've come to understand is that rich people, they respect money. Yeah. They respect money. They say money does not stay where it is needed. It stays where it is respected. Okay. So what you will find is that successful people make every coin count. They just don't count the money. They make it count. I'll give you an example. Yeah. Um, if you go to these big businesses nowadays in, in Nairobi downtown, when they are selling huge, you know, um, spare tire, spare yeah. tires, yeah. electronics, mm. they don't have, they no longer have, you know how um, MPS operates? Yeah. There is a, there is a till number, but yeah. if you are a merchant uh, uh, and, and you have a till number, this the money will be taxed, so it will yeah. be slightly less in your bank account. Yeah. So, but when you send money, the cost is the client. Yes. So you will find these clients no longer use the tier number. They will tell you, send money. Yes. Now, when you send money or withdraw money, they have an investor agent where they make two, uh, they make five shillings, ten shillings based on the transaction. Yeah. Now, ten shillings, assuming they have a hundred transactions, mm -hmm. ten shillings is how much in a, in a, in a in a in hundred transactions, that's a thousand bob, isn't it? Yes. A thousand bob, 20 days a month, that is 20,000. Yeah. And he has two employees, he pays 10k. Have you seen your investor transaction has paid yeah. this guy? Yeah, already. So in, this, in the, yeah. so in the story of when you tell them to give you a till number, they tell you withdraw, they look stingy. Eh. But it's but not they stinginess. know they are accumulating. They know they understand the value of accumulation. Uh, my friend. So what the rich have learned? Yes. So what the rich have learned is to respect the small money. They know eventually it is all that accumulates to be big. Do, do you know? It, it feels like it's a it's a whole chapter talking about uh, respecting money because you could actually teach several avenues in which you can respect money, isn't it? Yes. And, and it's, it's we, I, I, I like using very simple examples. Huh? Yeah. Let, let's assume right now we, um, for instance, when I was in Kampala. Yeah. Uh, we meet up and I tell you because I'm in a hurry, I give you, let's say, a thousand shillings for lunch, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And I've given you cash. Yeah. So, chances are, and, and let you have your, your business is doing well and you have a lot of money even in your bank account. So that cash is just lying in your pocket. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. 
So what will happen is that you will not notice where that a thousand bob. You will really not be keen to account for it. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. Because you had other money, is that? Yeah. It's like a windfall of thought. Take an example. Yeah. So take for example, uh, I tell you I'll buy you lunch, then I forgot, isn't it? Yeah. Then at night you find yourself. Uh, do you guys have? Uh, do you guys pay bills or you buy stuff and for electricity? We we pay bills using uh, mobile money sometimes. Okay. Yeah. So here in Kenya, we we no longer pay bills. Right? How? You can hear me. Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, so here in Kenya we no longer pay bills. What you do, you buy tokens for electricity. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I hear yeah, you. So we uh, buy. So we we do it. We do it here also. They, but but uh, there's also uh, there, there, there there's a group of guys who who pay bills, right? And then there are a group mm-hmm. of guys who uh, buy tokens depending on how connected they have been by Umeme. Uh-huh. So the so government is continuing to push out. to push to, for for people to buy tokens more than uh, paying bills. Yes. Yeah. Now let's talk about the the person who has let's say you're paying through tokens. Yeah. yeah? Mm-hmm. So you get to your house late. Yeah. And immediately the tokens are over, so you're in a blackout, isn't it? But yeah. you don't have mobile money in your phone. Yeah. And they. And at that particular moment, I send you, I tell you, I have remembered I was to send you lunch, I send you money at that particular moment. Yeah. Do you know you will forever feel like that thousand was a miracle? Yeah, yeah, of course. For, for the, it for the token. It will make more sense because now you have attached it to a bill. You have attached it to a recurrent expenditure. Right. Okay? Right. So I tell people, the small money you get, allocate them to small recurrent expenses like your fuel, yeah. your electricity, yeah. your water bill, so that now those ones at the end of the month you will find yourself with extra cash that you can invest elsewhere. That's how you respect small money. Right. That is interesting. Does that makes sense. It, it, it makes quite a lot of sense when you say when you when, when you put it that way. It, it's basically you know yeah. at, at the end of the day again there's this idea. <laughs> about the ego mm-hmm. you, you know when we want to show that yeah you know lose change let me not take that you you keep the change and the stuff like that you know uh, that's yes. not respecting money is it when you when you put your image ahead of money it, it's not it, it's not a, a wise thing to do for me for me it, it it brings me now to the topic of seasons money seasons yeah and you and I know, even when we were starting off life, sometimes we are even struggling to find food because your business is not yet growing. Uh, you don't have revenue yet. Yeah. And you're just struggling. And I remember one time, uh, I used to be paid by my boss 200 shillings per week. Whoa. Kenya shillings. You, you know the shillings. 200 bob per week. Whoa, 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 whoa. And because I was not paying rent, I was living in a wooden structure somewhere. So I had to make sure I eat at least 20 shillings, at most, sorry, yeah. 20 shillings per day. Wow. You know what I used to do? Uh-huh. Back then, a loaf of bread was 20 shillings, huh? Wow. So I'd buy a loaf of bread and avocado. Yeah. You get, you make a nice sandwich, you eat and you sleep. Bread and avocado. Yeah. Uh-huh. Now you see that is a season. Now you cannot. Now there is no way another season can come and you start disrespecting small money because you are way above that. Because what normally happens is mm-hmm. these seasons will always go away and they will always come back. Nothing yeah. is permanent, even a good season. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And that's a very very big lesson to anybody with a child anybody yeah. who has a child because i noticed you know where we used to fellowship and i used to serve in the children's ministry yeah we learned very early that children are adults in small bodies yeah they will copy everything you do yeah so if your child you can see that we can no longer afford 
we live in and we need to scale down mm. their home and explain to them for now we need to adjust mm. you are prepared child for life that when things are thick you adjust you don't live in denial Amen. so when it comes now to money seasons you have to to be prepared yes. and that's the key thing to be prepared for all seasons right what if and everybody who's listening to us should actually take some time and think what if the business you're doing was shut down as it happened before yeah it has happened you, what you, if the you, job the good job the well paying job that you are in yeah. today they was taken away from you yeah maybe what a, happened? a contract has it happened before okay it's, it's happening nearly daily you remember when covid I came just do, yeah it has happened Leave alone COVID. Yeah. I have a friend of mine who used to be a landlord and right now he's about 60. Yeah. And in 1982 when there was an attempted coup in Kenya, he was actually the one servicing signing off the presidential aeroplane. Whoa. Because of the attempted coup, yeah. they were arrested everyone in the community maximum prison for 8 months. Whoa. And you're in a government job. Yeah. And that man told me the biggest achievement I have in life is not even my wealth, but my ability to recover after being arrested innocently for eight years and being granted, you know, the way they call you persona non grata. Yeah, yeah. And you have to start from scratch. Yeah. So everybody should ask themselves: If I lose what defines me, if I lose my job, I lose my business. Yeah. Where do I start? And I'm afraid. Mm-hmm. Number two. Now that is losing it. What if you gain? What if someone gave you a hundred million dollars or a million dollars? That's a hundred million Kenyan shillings. Yeah. What would you do with that money? You know. And the problem with us Africans, I don't know whether you guys struggle with the same. In Kenya, we will find like in our northern region. Yeah. When it rains, it floods. Yeah. But when it dries, people are dying of hunger. Yeah. <laughs> so is the problem that or our inability to manage our resources? Yeah. That's the thing. So we should all prepare ourselves for money seasons, whatever it is. If I lose my job, I quickly adjust and don't listen to people. The other day I posted something on TikTok and I was telling people that uh, a broken mirror is never accurate. Yeah. Because a broken mirror is what you see yourself uh, how you see yourself through other people's eyes. People don't really care. Yeah. You get broke, you will laugh at you, they want two weeks and then they are quiet, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I remember one time I scaled down and someone who plays basketball with me was like You got broke you're driving a small car now. Mhm. Yet the young man did not even have a driving license. Mhm. Yes. So that's how it is you need to prepare for all those seasons. Let of me course, ask you. Because the two main seasons of course there's a time that you're surviving with the bare minimum yeah. and there's a time that you how do you adjust? There's, there's quite a bit to unpack in 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 everything that you've shared so far. But let's go back to this mm-hmm. uh, two seasons you've talked about. So, yes, someone loses everything. You know, um and that's a season of course. I think at the top of my mind I'm yes. thinking they need to understand it's a season because I'm, so I think the yes. most important thing in that particular moment in time is your mental health. Because if you don't have your mind together, uh-huh. you can basically lose it all together. You can forget it's a season. You can think it's a lifetime or it's a destiny. But w- yes. when we are in that particular moment, uh, do you have any nuggets? I know there are very many guys who are listening that they are maybe are in that season or they're headed there. Are there some nuggets that you can be able to unpack for them on just their personal finances? They're going through a loss. They're going through a constriction at this moment. What can they do mm. to manage and to get through that season? Well, you know, you're asking the right person because I've been there. Yeah. 
And whether we like it or not, that thing affects your health. Yeah. Most impo- importantly, it affects your creativity because you feel yeah. like everybody is looking at you. Yeah. And I tell people, all of us, a lot of us have been to the dentist, isn't it? Yeah. What the dentist does when they numb you and they do the process, procedure that they were doing, whether extraction or filling or whatever they were doing, mm-hmm. the numbness and they will tell you the numbness will end after an hour or two. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. But when you walk out, you have this feeling that your face is swollen or that side of the mouth is swollen and you're very careful. Yeah. You know, people might be looking at you and you feel like people are seeing. Yeah. Until you look at yourself in the mirror and there is no swelling. Yeah. So when whoever is going through that, there are several things that you need to do. Mm -hmm. One, it could be debt. Mm -hmm. It could be bills accumulating. Mm-hmm. It could be, you know, relationships that are ruined. Mm-hmm. I, first thing you do is take stock. I have this amount of debt. These guys are coming to auction me. Mm. My relationship, I've been, um, I'm, I've mismanaged finances. Mm. My my wife, children have left. Mm. This is uh, my employer. I have misused company funds they are demanding from me. I mean, list down all those the first thing you need to know is if there is nothing, if it is not within your control, mm-hmm. you need to say, whatever crumbles, crumbles. Mm. Face them like a man because what normally happens is that we assume we were born with these things. Yeah. Yeah. Yet we didn't have them in the All of them we have acquired over time. Yes. Yeah. You have stolen. So we have an attachment to so them. Good. Yes. So say whatever crumbles, crumbles, whatever falls, falls, Mm -hmm. and then you start to rebuild. The mistake that people make is denial. Yeah. Yeah. And you, and especially men, we have gone out there, we've taken loans, we've not told our spouses. Mm. You know, we've told our business partners. Uh, Amos, let me tell you. Let me, let me tell you something personal, mm-hmm. as far as uh, that, that is concerned. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, okay, I did not take a loan, but mm-hmm. uh, you know, to d- bring this point home, that we we get attached to mm-hmm. stuff, especially our identity, in terms of when things yes. you know are going wrong. Did you know? I mm-hmm. I, I, I scolded myself just last week. So, I am not able, that's what I think, I am not able to Mm -hmm. save a million Uganda shillings a month. Now, a million Uganda Uh shillings a month is equivalent to around 30,000 Kenya shillings, around 37,000 Kenya shillings, right? Uh So, I think I am not able Mm -hmm. to do that. Now, guess what? Mm -hmm. That particular Mm -hmm. month, the car gets an engine Mm -hmm. knock. And for some reason... Uh I raise the one million. Mm-hmm. You understand? Wow. I am not able to, yes. to to raise the one million to prepare, you know, for an investment or for some kind of saving and so on and so forth. But I'm able to raise the one million mm-hmm. for a contingency that is not that important just to keep up my, you know, appearances, so to speak. Yes. You, you get what yes. I'm saying? Yes. So uh, I, get I think at that moment in time, I I needed maybe I needed just to let go of of the car until I I, I get some surplus, so to speak, and then it can be put into the yes. car. Because to be honest with you, we we've walked. I mean, there are taxis all over the place, and you know you, you can you you know taxis are matatu in in Uganda. In, in, in I can use those, but I was able to squeeze some money that I did not have from I don't know where to repair a car mm. engine that is knocked, which is not necessarily an important thing, but the thing that I was doing was to maintain my mm. look. So that's the attachment you're talking about, uh, the denial that, you know, this thing has come. If yes. it's walking, you walk, man. If it's uh, jumping on a border border, do, do, do that. 
but you don't have to yeah. drive. I mean, you're not gonna die if, if you don't drive. It's it's crazy, man. The, in fact, the worst kind of denial that I wanted to add on the same. Yeah. This we have seen it as very, very, very dangerous. Yeah. It is a place whereby you know your income is not enough. Yeah. But the frequency of borrowing from that friend of yours. Yeah. You know, my my car has gotten an accident. Please send me ten k. I will sort you out. Yeah. It's urgent. Our money has not come in. I have arrears of two months. I need to pay at least a deposit of twenty thousand for my rent. Yeah. And that is such a bad denial because you're just borrowing for consumption. Yeah. You want to maintain a in lifestyle for people to see that you still live where you used to be. Yeah. That is so dangerous. Mm. To recover from it, even if when you get money, you are very negative because you're going back to paying the debts. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And at some point, I, I lived in that kind of setup until I sold my car. Yeah. So my car was guzzling. It was a guzzler. A yeah. serious guzzler. Yeah. But now business is not the way you want. So for me, I just got a smaller car. Yeah. And I used it to start something, you know. So that kind of adjustment, anybody who's going through a financial challenge, yeah. ask yourself, is it is it something that is within my control? Okay. And if it's in debt, debt and you have a salary, there are always ways of, there are so many ways of dealing with debt. Mm. So you need to seek help. Mm. You need to seek help. And importantly, importantly, mm -hmm. when you're going through what you're going through, please remember you need to set financial boundaries okay uh there's a nigerian saying mm -hmm. that i you know there was a time i was going through some stuff and i have my friend who's from nigeria and he told me that every dog eats nini it's poop every dog eats poop. he was using yeah he was using the other word yeah yeah the nigeria dog eats poop but it's only the foolish dogs that leave some on their mouth <laughs> <laughs> so the thing is whenever you're going through stuff unless yeah. it is someone who is giving you sober advice like yeah. a coach yeah um the boundaries you need to set is please don't tell all your friends what you're going through okay don't tell your parents your parents should never know that you're going through a financial challenge tell them it's tight yeah the support i was giving may not be able to do that that's part of boundaries yeah tell your kids this is the thing we have we have limits no more so suggestions tell you your yes and the first person please you should tell about a loss or anything it should be your spouse so that now they are also reducing the expectations Okay. So setting those boundaries are very, very, very important. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And 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 above all, always remember, we were born with nothing. Yeah. That's so bad. I tell truth. people. Yeah, you've read the book about the. He was called who? The Christ, is it Christopher? The the great. Yeah, uh, Alexander. The guy who conquered Europe. He was called who? Alexander. Is it Alexander Ale? Under the great, yes. Yeah. Remember what he did on his deathbed. Mm -hmm. He was about 700 kilometers away from home. Mm. This is a guy who had conquered nations. Mm. He was the kind of guy who would cross a bridge and burn it because we are not retreating, we are taking off over. Yeah. yeah. But when he realized he was 700 kilometers away from home and he was going to die, he told his general, this is one of the things that you will do. Yeah. All my physicians, my doctors will carry my body. Yeah. And my hands and my legs will be dangling outside my caskets. Yeah. And all my wealth, gold, should be melted and they should do a pavement towards my grave. Yeah. General asked him, why all that? He was afraid of asking him. He was still afraid of him. But he told him, this is to prove that everybody succumbs to death. Mm. That even the best Christians cannot heal you. Mm. For my feet and my hands dangling out is for it for people to see that I came here with nothing. I have left with nothing. Yeah. 
and hence why my wealth has been put all the way to the grave. Yeah. For me, I always remind myself that I'm not here permanently. Wow. That I can be taken away today and people will not come and say, Amos had this car, Amos had this car. They will always say how much they, you made them feel. The impact so let's created. Not start, yeah, so let's lose the pride where you do whatever you need to learn because God will take us through this season. So that's what I didn't mention. This season's God is aware and will take you through for you, Him to mold you. Whatever you are going through, make sure you have learned the lesson. Mm. Humble yourself. Mm. And He's the one who will give you these ideas because what God is interested in is your heart and mm. your sober mind. Mm. And don't be afraid. People will laugh. Mm. But your, your comeback is coming. My goodness, this is very sobering truth. But I, I want to ask you, now that you've talked about, uh, it's the same thing, probably nearly word for word, what I was discussing in my series on the episodes when I was talking about finances and purpose. People will not say he had uh, 12 pairs of shoes and people will not say he, you know, all, all that stuff. They will be talking about maybe the impact he created in an individual's life or in other people's lives and the changes he made, the contribution and so on. Which brings me to the yeah. fact that there is a connection between mm -hmm. money and purpose. Mm -hmm. Right? There is and? a connection between money and your purpose that you're supposed to do in, in this world, isn't it? That's a hundred percent. Yeah. And therefore, it, it brings us back to the first question we talked about, that money is mm -hmm. important, isn't it? It is important. Specifically, to, to be channeled towards living an impact. You've, you've just put it so succinctly, you've used more than 10 minutes to explain to us that we're going to leave all this stuff <laughs> behind, right? We're going to leave yeah. the, the, the cars, yeah. the guzzlers, the, the microphones, the, the laptops, the, and all that stuff. But the enduring yeah. thing that we can be able to do is to do our purpose. So I want us to talk to a guy out there who is a man or a woman of purpose and just, you know, an earth for them. What can they do to channel their finances towards purpose? Because there is the other idea of just living to pay bills, which I don't know if you subscribe to. You leave, money comes in, you pay, and then you die. Uh, you know, I don't think we all subscribe to, we, we subscribe to that kind of a philosophy. I don't think we subscribe to the philosophy where we are supposed to leave a signature behind because we existed. And money plays a critical role towards that. So if you were to talk to a guy or a group of people who are purpose-related people, what would you tell them about their finances? What will come on, on top of your head? Man, this is this is really deep, and, and I want everybody to just listen to me carefully. Yeah. And uh, understand that we are we are sheep in his flock. Yeah. He is our shepherd, and people don't understand what variety of people God created Himself for His purpose. Mm -hmm. Now, I want us to look at two two characters in the Bible. Mm -hmm. Uh, let's look at Solomon. Yeah. Histor historians will tell you if they were to calculate his actual wealth mm -hmm. right now into dollars, mm -hmm. chances that he will still be the richest man. Yeah. That's 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 what historians will tell you. Yeah. So this is Solomon, full of wisdom, making a lot of money, but he struggled with women. Mm -hmm. That is God's creation, right? Mm -hmm. Then come back to the parable of the rich man and Lazarus. And Lazarus. Yeah. Lazarus ate from what fell from the rich man's table. Yeah. Lazarus uh, was licked by dogs in shame. Yeah. His wounds were licked by dogs. Yeah. But you know, in that story, we have not been told the name of the rich man. Whoa. Meaning, it is not significant. Yeah. So, what if God has called you to play that role of Lazarus? 
and you're busy trying to borrow left, right, and center to be rich. Yeah. And can we let that sink for a minute? Yeah. Because you would be fighting, and that's the importance of knowing your purpose. Yeah. There you Why go. are you going to do what you're going? Is it God ordained? Yeah. Is it that it's it's a season in your life? Yeah. Is it that you're you are supposed to be where you're supposed to be? Because yeah. the last time I checked, God does not make mistakes. Yeah. So I'd like to tell people to when you are in a certain season, mm-hmm. don't spend a lot of time complaining. Mm-hmm. Oh, right? Mm-hmm. Because in the long run, we all love quoting Philippians four thirteen. Yeah. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Who strengthens me, isn't it? Mm-hmm. But you know that if you read the entire chapter from verse eleven, mm-hmm. there is a condition towards you doing all things which Christ has given you strength to do. Yeah. Because in Philippians uh, four uh, four eleven, yeah, uh, Paul is telling the Philippians, "Listen, I'm not saying this because." I have a lot. Yeah. But in whatever state I am with, mm-hmm. I have learned to be content. Mm. So I know how it feels to have mm. and know how it feels to lack. Mm. All right? Mm-hmm. Therefore, I can do all, all things. things through Christ who strengthens me. Yeah. And this revelation I got in you understanding the seasons. Yeah. I would not be here. So I would not be here if I had not been if I have not been broke to tell the truth. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. I would not be here if I have not had death to my neck and yeah. I lived to tell the truth. Yeah. I'd be teaching you how to swim like Pastor Barnabas used to say. Mm-hmm. I'd be teaching you how to swim in a classroom. Yeah. But I have been there and every story is worth it. I can tell you for a fact. Mm-hmm. Every Samuel, every shame I've gone through, every you know doubt that I've had is mm. totally worth it because someone is waiting for that story on the other end. Mm. So I'd like to tell that person who's about to give up because money is uh, less mm. or they feel like I'm my job. My mm. goodness, that mm. does not define who you are. Yeah, yeah. Because if you understand your purpose, yeah. Because God told me, man, your purpose is to be an enabler. Yeah. Now we'll give you stories and I will take you through valleys. Yeah. But listen, I'm still your shepherd. I'm the one who knows where the water is. Yeah. I'm the one who knows where home is. I'm the one who knows where the lion is. I'm yeah. the one who knows where the wolf is. But I will be with you. Yeah. So it's up to you to know. Because once you know your purpose, let me tell you something. Mm-hmm. I get caught. Or people telling me, I, I I listen to you in a radio station, and my life has never been the same. Yeah. And then I tell God, you know what? And ask your glory because yeah. it is you who's put that purpose in me. Yeah. So rejoice. The Bible tells you count it all joy. Yeah. Because you've been counted worthy. Yeah. You know. Yeah. 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 So so I I feel like. That person needed that encouragement to know whatever is crumbling, let it crumble. It's mm-hmm. time for you to rebuild, my friend. Okay, awesome, my my friend. Awesome stuff right there. I, I really am itching to find out how come personal finances, mm-hmm. of all the things you could be passionate about, where did this passion mm-hmm. for personal finances come come in? And uh, at some point in time, you were passionate about children. I think you still are. But right now, your brand is about money, personal finances. Where did that uh, pivot come from? I, I, I'll tell you, there's some things that even if you study whatever you're studying in whichever university, yeah. if this, God has put something in your heart, it never goes away. Yeah. What did it you study, ne- by the way? It never goes away. Yeah, because even now, I'm doing my first degree in Strathmore University. Yeah. Specialized in market, not finance. Whoa! So this is your passion. What, this is, so to speak, something you're just passionate about. Yes. 
And uh-huh. how it started is that a while ago, um, uh, my dad could not afford fees and I met this guy in a certain church where he used to go and I liked his car. Mm-hmm. And I told him, do you have an opportunity for a job? He told me, come to my office. And I went in a t-shirt and jeans. Can yeah. you imagine? To yeah. look for a job. Yeah. And this guy looked at my guts. He was like, go and wear a tie and then come back. Yeah. <laughs> and he gave me an insurance sales job, which was very hard. Yeah. But it took me a while to sell. But even when I started, I realized that my clients were falling off books. Yeah. Because the first year they could be able to afford the premiums, but the second year something came up. Yeah. So I said, I would allow my clients to lose me money, why don't I just go a little further and show them how to invest and to organize themselves better. Yeah. And that is how um, my consultancy started. Okay. How long? This is now, uh, I should be doing 16 years. Whoa. Okay. Yeah. Right. And uh, I found it, I found it intriguing to serve children because children are so innocent, they will always tell you what they think. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> they will challenge the way you behave, not the way you talk. Yeah. It's you to, you know, be a guide to them. Yeah. And would you believe I was taught how to swim by children? No kidding. For a camp. They all knew how to swim other than myself. No kidding. So, so children to me, and God bless me with two boys, you know. Yeah. So children to me are very, they are a, a very big part of even what I teach. I try to, all my principles are very simple. Yeah. I try to give advice like I could give to my nine-year-old. Yeah. You know, something that he can run with. So obviously, the way your father raised you in terms of your relationship with finances is not the same way you're raising your kids in relation, in relationship with finances, right? Not at all. Hey, my friend. Yeah. Let's go I there. have had big challenge because I copied the cult of my dad. Yeah. Which, uh, which may not work very well for me. Yeah. So I've had to challenge myself and do things differently. Yeah. Because if I don't, I'll be setting an example for my kids. What specifically are you doing for your kids in terms of uh, their financial future? Um. Most importantly, mm-hmm. the biggest focus I have is not even what I live for them. Yeah. Is what I am living in them. Right. The principles. The principles that you live in them. I do not plan to leave any bit of inheritance for them. Whoa. Because I also don't plan to depend on them. Whoa. You understand that? I understand where you're coming from, but someone will tell you this. Uh, I had a, um, mm-hmm. a personal financial coach saying something to the effect that if you're pursuing your purpose, money is mm-hmm. absolutely critical. The guy who has some money, some disposable income, mm-hmm. just like you said earlier on, the, their mind is free to think not to think of where the landlord is going to come from, how can I evade the landlord and so on, but they're free to think about their purpose. And like the guy who doesn't have money. So I'm thinking there's a school of thought that if you have something that can buttress the kids, right? And of course they participate in raising it, uh, raising it up as they grow up. When they get to that age where we go to the age we, we, we got out of home and uh, we're now looking for jobs and so on and so forth, they don't have that mm-hmm. uh, stress. They have some leg room, some, you know, some runway, so to speak, to use mm-hmm. as they pursue their purpose. What, what do you say about that? Um, for me, I like being very difficult. Eh? And I don't know... Because you, you are, you're more like ours more than you are Ugandan. <laughs> and you know yeah. what's happening in the country. Yeah. Let me give you a very good example. Other than the, the late Bob Colimo. Yeah. Any other celebrity that has passed on and you didn't hear of wrangles when it comes to wealth. Yeah. Everybody else. Right? Yeah. So what does that tell you? Mm-hmm. 
I come from this school of thought mm. that when you get married, a lot of marriage setups are a lot of women are giving up their dreams mm. to support the husband. Yeah, and especially if the husband is doing very well financially. Yeah. So he's a senior position, and they they term their wives to put aside your dreams, then mm. start, isn't it? Mm. So the wife the dreams, right? Mm. Now, when you have kids, a lot of us feel like our kids should be able to continue with the kind of work we are doing. Yeah. Which is, and there was a study done that chances are like are unlikely that your children will do what you do, isn't it? Yeah, it's true. But tell them, come work for me. What are you telling them? To help their dreams to come and work for you. Mm-hmm. So the day you are gone, they have no idea where to start. Mm-hmm. And that's where you will find they will fight for, fight for whatever little is left behind. Mm-hmm. My son, who's nine years old, mm-hmm. Billy, mm-hmm. has been watching Dr. Binox mm-hmm. on YouTube. Mm-hmm. They apparently now can draw without referring anywhere, can draw your digestive system and explain how it works. Dr. Binox. With Dr. Binox. Yeah. He will draw for you the heart, how it pumps blood. We went to the dentist and he's asking the dentist, are those even naming the parts of the tongue? How do you, how do you, how do you spell Binox? I want to look it up. Dr. B-I-N-O-C-S, Binox. N-O-C-S. Yes. Okay. So I learned that this fellow is good at art because he draws very well and he is interested in the health sector, in the system, yeah. body system. Yeah. I I have not been called. I don't like seeing blood. Of course. Me too. My one now is so fascinated about sports. Yeah. So the best I can do right now mm-hmm. is put something in their head that this is how you, you generate a passive income. Right. Right? Right. By the time they are 18, I've shown them how I do my side household in construction, mm-hmm. sell the first house. So by 2021, they can be able to generate cash outside mm. their main area, that is passive income. Mm. So by the time the person is going to campus, mm-hmm. first of all, they have learned how to generate cash. They are paying for their university. I didn't tell you I don't plan to pay for their university. Yeah. They will pay for themselves. I, I realize that. And then. A, yeah, they will have a sense of ownership. Yeah, there you go. All right? That's it. That's it. The ownership part. Uh, a friend of mine did a tour to Israel. And uh, mm-hmm. when, when he came back, he told me a very interesting story. He said that uh, at one of the restaurants that uh, they went, they were being waited on mm-hmm. by a particular lady, a very young lady. And he, he engaged uh-huh. her in a discussion and asked her why she was working. And she said, it's for my university. This is a well-to-do family, but mm-hmm. the lady has to pay for her uni, but she, she's got to work for it. So, I, I think you're right, it creates that sense of ownership. Yeah. When, we were, when I started serving in the children's ministry, mm-hmm. the, the pastor, one of the pastors, I mean, some of the lessons she taught me, I still apply today. Mm-hmm. You know her? Yeah. And she told us one time, taking her nieces out. Yeah. To this mall. Every time you take them out. But she would find herself spending a lot of money. Yeah. So, what she was tight. So, she decided, I'm going to give you each an, an amount of money. And what you're going to do is that once you've done, your, you have exhausted the money, we go home. Mm. And the kids were negotiating. And they even came back early. They were like, now we have saved some for mm. next time. Mm. What does that tell you? This kid is already learning that there's a sense of ownership and yeah. I need to save up and I need a day for tomorrow. Yeah, responsibility. I need some tomorrow. So, yeah. so you teach that. The okay. moment these kids start to know that this thing costs money, Yeah. like now we are planning another, we, we uh, take my boys for a camp and go to the coast and they know the ticket is 2000 Yeah. All right. 500 for kids and uh, one to me. So we are working towards saving 2,000 shillings. Yeah. Okay? 
Yeah. So he cleans up here, he mops the house, you give him a 50 bob, 100 bob. He's accumulating for that particular purpose. I see. So you, you attached the, the trip to the responsibility. Yes. Right. Exactly. Right. So that they put the part in it. So I'm not saying, I know there are some people who would want, because of course I'll still be living in a house and they can take it after I'm gone. Yeah. But, but I don't want to kill their dreams for the sake of taking over what I have. I see. I, okay. I, I really get what you're so saying. Yeah. Is that, yeah. So if that guy wants to serve humanity as a doctor, as yeah. long as he's not, uh, he has a passive income that he's taking care of his stuff, let him do it because that's his purpose. There you go. Okay. There you go. And I don't plan to ever receive money from them. There that you go. That takes me to the next yeah. question. Yes. The next topic. Yes. You should prioritize your retirement should come first before thinking of leaving an inheritance for your children. Your yeah. retirement. Yeah. Okay. You don't want your kids as your retirement plan, yeah. So you, you take care of yourself in your old age. Uh, so that what, what's, the, what's the rationale behind that? I'm guessing it's so that uh, they, they can also do the same for themselves. They don't have to have you That's like a point. burden. Yeah. I, I don't know about, uh, I don't know your culture in Uganda. Here yeah. we have a very, very bad culture. Yeah. Same here. Black tax. Black tax is a big thing here. It's same, same, same here. You're supporting your parents. They are sick. You're taking loans. Yeah. They say you're not supporting them enough. Please build for us a home. Yeah. That should not be happening. Yeah. And I think that should not be happening. Yeah. And because we can't tell our parents to support them, the back stops with us. Yeah. So we have a big challenge. We need to be the last ones supporting our parents. Mm. And we need to never ask for money from our children. Mm. Let them give you the demand. Don't cast them because they've not supported you. Mm. Okay? Give so them. it's a tall order. Yeah. Yeah. It's a tall order, so that's why you need to take care of your retirement right now. Start generating that passive income that will be your go-to place when it comes to cash flow. Because the other thing is that a lot of people are retiring with just homes to live in. Yeah. You are rich, as rich, but no cash flow. Yeah, 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 yeah. You, you, you're absolutely right. I want to ask you uh, an interesting question here. You know, there is a big bias in this world of ours against, uh, quote-unquote, motivational speakers. Someone might ask mm -hmm. you, Amos, where are your million dollars before you can start telling me about money? Where do you get the authority to tell me about money? Show me yours. What are you going to tell such kind of a person? That's a very interesting question. Yeah. Uh -huh. I will tell you, I'll answer that in two ways. I have, when uh, when I was working in the insurance company, what I did tell you is that I grew my commissions and I was able to buy a few properties here and there. Yeah. And I am not a billionaire, that one I can tell you. Yeah. And if, whether the billions, uh, listen to this, whether the billions come or not, Yeah. my goal is to be content. Remember, contentment. Right. right. Whatever it is, because I don't know what God has in store for me. I know it's great things, but unless I'm prepared character-wise, yeah. it will take me time. So, the things that I tell I tell people that I have the confidence in sharing is my scars. I have made major mistakes. Yeah. I have made major mistakes. Yeah. And from where I stand, I can tell you that it work. Yeah. I can tell you what matters right now because you will regain your wealth. Yeah. I have been to places where people are wondering, hey, is this the same guy who talks to us about money? Yeah. And you, yeah. You know? Yeah. But what I tell people is that I'm just a survivor who learned to, you know, live to tell the story. Yeah. And we are all in a journey. Yeah. Because I can tell you uh, when you make a huge loss that you've lost the family savings, yeah. When I tell you, 
it is important the first person you tell sit them down is your spouse please do it because if you wait for a year the issue of trust is gone yeah, yeah. that does not mean need me to have a billion shillings in my account for you to believe me trust you me yeah. it has affected me and so, so that's what I tell yeah that's powerful because contentment you know it, it varies from one person to another isn't it and it doesn't have a, a particular figure whether it's a thousand or a million or a billion or a trillion it doesn't have that figure yes right yeah okay yeah, yeah. Awesome stuff, man. And as, and, you, and as you grow in wisdom, yeah, you you just ask God to prepare you for these things. There's a question that I I would like to ask anybody who's listening to us. Yeah, to take a piece of paper to write in their notes today. Yeah, today if someone gave you an open check and they asked you to write down the amount that you need and you may never want to be given any other amount of money. Yeah. And what you can do with it? How many people can tell you exactly this is what I want? That's the thing. That's the and thing. And how many people can be able to differentiate that from a seed that you can invest somewhere, yeah. or it's just money for consumption? It, it takes us back to. It, it takes us back to the the money personalities that you shared with us, the monks. The spenders, mm-hmm. the avoiders, and the hoarders, and there's a, a, a second section that you, we didn't uh, talk about when we were talking about the seasons. Mm-hmm. You remember there was a season of uh, luck. We, we we handled that, but then you you yeah. also talked about the season of abundance. You know, yeah, that's the yeah. same thing you're talking about. Someone giving a blank check and uh, y- the money is yours. So let us delve in exactly. there, even as we're coming to a close of the episode. Let's let's just dwell in there, because uh, there's a bit to learn. What do you do with a million dollars? What should you? Uh-huh. Do? So the question will be. Let me refresh the question. How would someone prepare themselves? Because you've handled the issue of character. How would someone prepare themselves character-wise? or uh, street smart wise or money wise how would someone prepare themselves so much so that they are worth they are worthy sorry to receive the a million dollars that's a very good thing and and you you've talked about so many times I've, I've, I've seen you talk even about goal setting huh? yeah and earlier I mentioned about in Kenya where in our northern region sometimes when it rains it floods it kills people floods kill people mm-hmm. when it's dry season it's so dry no food it also kills people yeah and the thing that we need to ask ourselves how can we harvest water yeah. is it that we have our own reservoirs mm-hmm. is it that we are going to dams mm-hmm. is it that we are going to uh prepare you know those rafters that you tap you trap water from the roof mm. are we going to do that mm. now the thing is you cannot build those things when it is raining yes you have to do it way before the rain comes you anticipate exactly i was listening to a guy who's done psychology in money yeah and there was a study that he was talking about and actually 90, 90, was it 96 or 95% of people who win the lottery yeah they lose that within 18 months yeah 90, 95% they lose it within 18 months yeah and they are actually worse off than before than before they go into depression and Several cases have been reported of suicide. Yeah. So, so the idea here is, is not just uh, uh, not just uh, how how good you're able to handle a, a scarcity situation, but also most yes. importantly, how can you handle an abundant situation? Exactly. Yeah. What are your goals if today? And I can tell you, and this will shock you, if you ask me how much money I need right now because of the project of construction, yeah. right now, I yeah. only need 15 million. Shilling, shilling. And shilling. Yeah. But two years you come to see me, it's going to be 100 plus. Yeah. Because I have goals that that money will go through. Yeah. 
I remember the, the late Chris Kirubi. Mm-hmm. I'm using him with all due respect for lack of a better example. Yeah. I remember one time he was being interviewed on, on NTV, I remember remember very well and he was asked how much money do you carry and you know it yeah. surprised people yeah that he only carried 10,000 shillings in his pocket yeah so I asked myself and people were laughing and for me I asked myself if I give this guy a hundred million chances are you will not notice where it has gone yeah hundred million yes okay yeah but in Kenya we say maskini atipata matako uriya pwata yeah as in restless I mean, you will that's what, what we say here. When a poor map man gets money, mm. I mean... He is he, restless he until the money is gone. Problem. Yeah. So, the thing is, and I'll tell people, before, even as you do a personal evaluation of your finances, mm-hmm. start saying, at the end of this year, or at, in the next three years, I need to own a home, isn't it? Yeah. And just a home. The first home, because I might get there through debt yeah. or through accumulating and borrow from somewhere. Mm-hmm. The first house I will move in, yes, but I will sell it, make a profit, and then pay the loans and probably do two or three houses before I eventually settle, isn't it? Mm-hmm. So now move backwards and say, right now I don't have this m- amount of money, so I can choose to save like in a saving society. I don't know if in UG you have that. Yeah. The last time I was there. You are, you are benchmarking on circles, eh? Yeah. So, then pick a vehicle that will end up getting you there, isn't it? Yeah. So, once you do that, I know the end goal is five million to get that house. But in the journey, mm-hmm. if someone, you win a lottery of four million, mm-hmm. what will it do to your goal? It will bring it closer. Yeah, faster. Are we, are we together? Yeah. So chances are of you being diverted and you being conned because you have idle money in your bank account yeah. are very slim yeah. because you have a big goal ahead. Yeah. And yeah. that is the power of setting goals financially. Right. Setting simple, practical, so that if money hits you along the way, it fast tracks your goals. He knows where it's going. Yeah. It knows where it's going. Yeah, I had uh, a visionary uh, of um, the the church I attend to is called Watoto Church. He's called Gary Skinner. Watoto Church, he formerly Kampala Pentecostal Church. And okay. every beginning of year, he normally shares the vision of the year and so on. I had him last year, I think, before COVID, I think. I had him say something mm-hmm. very powerful. He said, right now, if someone gave us a hundred million dollars, it is already spent. You get uh-huh. the vision is so huge mm-hmm. that he knows how much is needed and where it exactly is going to go. So, wow. the, the, when the hundred million comes, it's gone. It's spent, and mm-hmm. it can be. A, it's, it, by the way, it's one of the fewest churches in the country whose accounts are audited and they are open for you know uh, verification by anyone anywhere. So wow. the, the idea of the idea of handling your abundance before the abundance comes, I think it also speaks yes. to you building character. As in, if I have, um, I don't have a million shillings, maybe I have a mm. hundred. What what what, yeah. what character do I have that handles the a hundred mm. so much so that mm. it's not going to be different? when the million comes. Mm-hmm. Is that what you're talking about? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, and, and that's, that's, that's a very, very nice example that you cannot see it. Yeah. The worst enemy you can have, and especially if you're a spender, let, let everybody know, if you're a spender, the worst thing you can do to yourself is have disposable and planned cash in your bank account. Yeah. Because what normally happens, you know, if you are paid the same day mm-hmm. and we work in the same place, mm-hmm. chances are by the first days of this month we will both be broke. Yeah. Namala is investing, I am not, but we'll still be broke. Yeah. But it's only a matter of time. Yeah. Because Namale has been has been accumulating. Yeah. Our balance will not be the same. Yeah. And there's nothing as bad as just have 
something idle cash then it is over and you're trying to track what did i do with my money yeah yeah and probably you don't even drink you don't even have those sherehes that people bigger yeah i know kampala and uh, i know ugandans and kenyans are known for for, yeah. for parties right? yeah 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 but i'll test you for a fact even if you don't party like that mm-hmm. it feels so bad that with money is no longer there and you can't really pinpoint what you did with the money mm-hmm. so it is very important for us to address this issue let mm-hmm. money find you ready mm-hmm. that you divert it quickly and you don't have cash lying idle mm-hmm. nice yeah. so even as we come to a close this is a very f- uh, last closing of our episode today would you have any pointers to help uh, someone to form a good character in relation to money well um i have i think i can have two yeah i think we can conclude with two mhm and tell people to start by saying that um there are million actually over a billion ways to make money yeah as a coach i'm not an expert in all of them so you should never worry how to make money yeah at some point you'll be creative because we're in a generation that is extremely creative you will get money yeah and i remember back then we used to go to cybers and get information no longer are we struggling with information if yeah. anything there's too much information out there yeah so there are two things that will make people succeed when it comes to money mm mm-hmm. one is emotional competence okay make sure that it is not emotions that are running your finances wow okay that you're not desperate to make that money you're not desperate to make uh pay off because of your status yeah hello you don't want to please the you're not pleasing people Yes, your neighbor has a uh, girlfriend out uh-huh, on Valentine's Day. Uh-huh, aha, uh-huh, yeah. Yeah. When you have uh, lost money, you can sit down without emotions and communicate effectively to your spouse. Yeah. As a parent, Dita Gonga wazazi, as a parent, please do not borrow to start a business for your son. Okay. Uh-huh. we have seen that so number one is emotional competence we must be super right number two mm-hmm. please manage distractions okay uh huh you have set a goal to do that house yeah anything else that is diverting you from achieving that goal yeah even that job loss manage it as a distraction money will come you will still get that job it's just a temporary study yeah yeah yes when you lose your job then you start and you are in business or business you're in that season of scarcity yeah and uh, you're being told to cast god and die by your spouse please <laughs> is a distraction <laughs> yeah yes so we, we have to be very smart in managing our distraction Nice. Because sometimes even our inability sometimes we look at ourselves through other people's eyes. Yeah. To stay focused. So those are two things that once you have them the bit of creativity I leave it to you. Yeah, yeah. you can do this. You yeah. got what it takes. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome stuff. Amos, I am so glad that you are in book. I I can you know it tells me just speaking to you there very many talking points that we can use i mean you can just delve into one talking point and you can spend another hour in there and probably i'm thinking yeah. that uh, at some point in time we should come back and do another episode uh, just to continue no. beefing up the information with people and so on and so forth so i'm glad that you were able to take some time off and have this discussion on life signatures podcast Thank you so much sir and I'm I'm really grateful I'd love to hear uh if the people of the Uganda are challenged yeah. and anybody else listening to you wherever they are in the in part of the world yeah. um um I'm so grateful that if we can have one person you know just challenge the way they look at finances I think our job will be done that's good so that that leads me to this I think you should be open enough to 
give your contact and in case there's someone out there who wanted to personally reach out to you maybe an organization or just an individual and they want to talk to this financial guru who can uh, help them coach them walk with them and show them the better ways of handling their personal finances what, what, how can they get in touch with you well um I am available online. If today you Google Amos Gavi, <laughs> it will give you. First of all, it will give you TikTok because I got into TikTok last November. Yeah. And TikTok, I am calling myself Money Gossip. Money Gossip. Money Gossip on TikTok. Yes. Okay. Money Gossip. Uh huh. Anybody can look at the videos I do, like three minutes video to challenge certain topics or yeah. to provoke your thoughts and yeah. your behavior on my. Mm-hmm. So TikTok is my gossip. Mm-hmm. You go to Instagram. I am now Money Clinic. Mm-hmm. That's the name of my company, Money Clinic KE. Okay, Money Clinic KE on Instagram. Yeah. On Instagram mm-hmm. and also Money Clinic KE on uh, Facebook. All right, it's a page. Yes, but I don't like telling sending people my number. But directly, I'd like you to go view any of the videos if you've been challenged as how now you DM me, and I right. always respond, and especially on Instagram. All right. You go to my inbox, I will love to respond, and then from there we can pick a conversation. All right. So that's money gossip yeah. on TikTok, money clinic ke yes. on Instagram, money clinic ke on Facebook. Okay. Yes. All right, Amos. Thank you so much. Uh, regards to your boys, your wife, your workmates, yes. and everybody else back there in Nairobi. I'm sure we will be back. I am so grateful, man. Thank you for inviting me to your podcast. Uh, please tell everybody you've been counting your money for too long. <laughs> it's time to make it count. All it's right. It's time to make it. All yeah. right. Thank you for that nugget. But until another time, ladies and gentlemen, we come to the close of this episode. Amos, bye bye and God bless you. Bye Thank you for listening to Life Signatures Radio. If you enjoyed today's show, subscribe to Life Signatures Radio on iTunes, Stitcher, or visit our website at lifesignatures.libsyn.com. Life Signatures Radio, fresh, clean, and inspiring.